We have it. Cloud9 winning on Nuke and ending up in a really good position, of course. Now going into the second map and these aren't quite the casters. It's going to be you and me still instead. That, um, that came as a surprise to everyone, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, not the prediction either one of us two made. Now it's going to be on Dust2, and we just heard from Fetish. He said, well, maybe it's just going to be a reverse, and NIP winning on, on Dust2. How confident do you feel on that? Um, I'd have to kind of side with uh, Richard on this, actually. If Nip wanted to win that map, I mean, that was Nip's map. Dust2, it kind of goes up in the air. They both have the loose style, playing style. They both have the individual talent. It could be anyone's game. It's just whoever gets the, the lead, whoever gets the momentum. So it can go either way at this point. Um, it's whoever wants it more. The one thing I would say, if I had to, to point out something for an IP, which is in the last couple of months, my, my major gripe with them has been Get Right. And he mm -hmm. actually played really well on Nuke. Yes. So if Get Right keeps doing what Get Right does, and uh, just a few more, you know, individual performances. Freiburg opens up with an ex with an entry kill somewhere. I do actually think NIP could take it away on Dust too. Yeah, but we we saw individual performance from performances from both teams. We saw Freiburg picking up some good rounds. Exist had a, g a great, I think, it was a four kill round at upper. We saw Force picking up good rounds. Get Right had good rounds. Same thing with uh, all of the Cloud9 players, but what Cloud9 brought to the table that NIP didn't that game was that Cloud9 on their terror side of Nuke, they outbrained Nip on several occasions. When they did the upper smokes and fake, and then they walked outside and got into lower, that was, or sorry, they walked uh, under heaven and boosted yeah. up. That was a huge round. That they was did. massive. And I feel like they, they did more, um, more like countering, more uh, just adjustments towards Nip's playstyle. Okay, so let, if we pick up on that a little bit, because Nuke is definitely a map that allows for a lot of mind games like that. Yes. Dust2 maybe a little bit less, a little bit more on the aim side. Yeah. So McCloud9 have the aim side too. Can yes. they make the switch? Is Sean, oh sorry, is Semphis good enough to, to as an in-game leader to make the switch from playing on a, as you say, on a slightly more intelligent side to a slightly more um, aim-heavy side maybe? Again, um, I think just a loose playstyle from both teams is just going to come down to individuals. It's not going to be um, a, a specific strat. It's going to be individual players kind of finding a hole in the opposition's, you know, defense mm. and try to exploit it. So Get Right's going to, whenever he sees an opportunity, he's going to go for it. Whenever Forrest gets an opportunity for a kill, he's going to go for it. Same thing with, um, I, I guess it would be Hiko flanking. He would go for the same thing that, that Get Right would go for. Sampis would go for the entries the same way that Forrest would. I feel like Cloud9, and you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong here, but I have a, a slight theory about how this team works in the long run. Mm -hmm. Because it feels to me like some teams that revolve around just an individual star going really crazy. Shroud might be one guy, as you see him on the camera here, to point out he played so well on that new map. Yeah. But if you rely on just Shroud to get a bunch of kills, Winning a whole tournament is really hard because you just need a few, you know, one or two bad games from him and that could be enough to knock you out. But the way Cloud9 seem to function is they rotate the role of who it is that goes absolutely nuts. Throughout this, we've seen Hiko, we've seen Semphis, we've seen just about everyone having their individual, you know, shining moment. So do you think is that, is that, it seems to me like that's one of the strengths here. And obviously what they have to hope for is they don't ever hit a game where none of them do. But so far they have, they haven't had that. I think that the team's in, is just set up in a way that any one of them to, can shine at any given moment. We saw Sean actually on, on Mirage yesterday. I forget who it was against. Was that it was against Dignitas. Dig? Yeah, it was against Dignitas. He was hot fragging for them. And, you know, that's, that's not common Sean. But any, any one of them can step up at any given time. It's just when it comes down to Dust2, which is what we're looking at here, and then Cobble if it goes to the third map, is that both the teams are going to be loose in the sense that they, they're not strict. They're not kind of told, do this now. You can kind of move over and, and use your own decision making to kind of open up the round whichever way you want. And I think that that is going to be the key difference here as opposed to just raw executing strats. Uh, Clown9 definitely looking happy. Semphis there getting ready and Sean Gans look, uh, looks a lot more focused than, uh, than the rest of the squad. I don't think he's blinked. No, just looking around, counting the seconds here. Can you tell anything at all by looking at player faces before? Because we always try and guess, but I mean, it's really hard to tell the difference between focus and worry or, you know, calm. Yeah, you can. Like, I saw when we were watching Epsilon earlier, I mean, we, we saw them slouched over. Like, one person had was resting his face on his fist. It's like, there you know, like, you're, you're completely out of the element. You're not involved. You're not mentally invested in the game. But there we saw, we saw focus from the Cloud9 players, for sure. Yeah.
like what Get Right's doing there with his kind of like arm up. Um, oh, never mind. He's just uh, getting rid of that sweat. <laughs> My bad. Fair enough. So, oh, but we do have. I have actually seen a number of players today with with like heat packs where they they keep their fingers warm with the. Uh, well, this pro had some, and I think uh, some of the Epsilon players did too. Oh, I had no idea. Well, I, I, um, I got to try one out. Obviously, it doesn't really make any difference to me, but I guess playing with cold hands is something that some people do complain about. Oh, yeah. It's an interesting way of getting rid of it. There we do have a shot of the crowd here getting ready to watch an absolutely great quarterfinals here. Second map is about to come up. We just need the last issue uh, sorted out. So shout out to all you guys in the crowd and thanks for tuning in. Actually, you guys can't see this on the on the camera back at home, but all the way around the uh, the actual seating area, there are people just ready and waiting to get in. There oh, are long queues. Lines up. Yeah, li Line long up. queues all the way around of people who want to get in. So hopefully next year, it's going to be even more space for Counter-Strike here at Gamescom. Clutch or kick? All right. Hopefully that's not the situation that NIP is going to end up in, although it is always a popular topic, um, you know, if there was a change, what would it be? Yep. We'll have to see if it's even necessary here. Welcome back to the stream, ladies and gentlemen. This is ESL 1 2014 Gamescom here in Cologne, and we have Cloud9 versus NIP, second map in the quarterfinals. It's the last North American team. It's the la well, it's not the last Swedish team, but very nearly. And NIP, they're going to be starting on the sometimes more favored terror side, but it's not really easy to count on that. This is not like new. Nothing jumping and could have got caught off there. Grenade's going to rain in, and Freiburg with a very good opening. Does exactly what he is contracted to do. Gets the opening pick, and now actually Cloud9 have a pretty heavy stack towards the A-bomb side, leaving B very weak, but they're going to go aggressive, and Freiburg will just pick up a second, pick up a third. They're all headshots. Exist comes in with a kill on Shroud, and now it's Hiko. One on five. Freiburg has already made his mark, made sure that they won that round. Hiko is going to go for it, and Freiburg will eventually fall, but it is too late. Geraint is going to be waiting. Hiko charges in, doesn't check. Oh, what? what? Oh my god! Inhuman reactions! Hiko! Not even with an aimbot could you have got that kill. And Hiko is still in a one on three, almost unwinnable position. But that is a terrifying message to anyone who ever dares to challenge Hiko. You might end up being going, being killed just like that. Exist will get the last one, but surely that is going to be a kill that will go down in history. I don't think uh, Get Right's going to try to flank anyone ever again. After that, I'll be demoralized. That but. happened so fast that even with the direct feed into into the game here, we actually we actually it, it didn't update fast enough. Well. Aren't we technically go TV? Yeah, but I think this is a higher tick rate than normally should be. So that is very, very impressive. Unfortunately, it doesn't change the outcome of the round for Hiko. But yeah. as a sort of statement of, of pure power, mm -hmm. do you think that registers with NIP somewhere in their minds? I mean, I'm sure, like, Gary didn't see how swift the actual kill was. Like, he doesn't know, like, you, you can tell, like, that guy got a crazy shot. But he doesn't know how crazy it was. I'm sure in Hiko and the rest of Cloud9's mind, they're just like, that was a sick shot. Like, we don't even care that we lost a round. It was worth it to see that happen. <laughs> Going into the second round, NIP obviously have the rifles here, including a P90 on Geraint, which is a, a choice we've been seeing them going for a, for a while now. CZ75 is all around on Cloud9, and you can't blame them. It's been such an effective uh, right or pistol here throughout this, uh, this tournament already. Forrest checking the bomb site. It's got to be a very careful. He's jumping again. Forrest's been doing this a lot lately. Jumping and attempting to shoot, and it's really not the best plan. He's going to come look for the kill, gets a quick one, and Exist will help out Forrest with a good double. And they managed to stabilize the round. No issues at all. They did take a lot of damage on Forrest, but it's going to be all over. Not losing a single member. And again, another really strong start for NIP, but as we saw in the last game, Cloud9 quickly adjusted and started picking up rounds. So they don't want to basically give up this lead. They don't want to get too cocky. They don't want to get too overconfident. They don't want to get complacent. They want to just keep their keep playing their game. But we are going to see actually uh, a strat okay. coming out from Cloud9. I don't, I don't want to give anything away, but uh, it, it looks like they are heavily invested in this. 
They definitely are. They do not have a defuse kit though, but um, you're right. They're definitely up to something. Third round. And they've actually already kind of given it away. Hiko Spammer with the FAMAS. So, you know, obviously an IP are going to be hearing that and thinking, all right, we, yeah. we know what's up. So there is a scout. There's a few FAMASs on the Cloud9 members. And basically they're they're playing a really not risky. I mean, oh, that's a beautiful shot for Sean. Are you kidding me? Takes down Forrest, who's been playing pretty well so far. Grenade to follow. And now we're going to be looking at Semphus for a moment. It's the third round up already, and Cloud9 are getting ready to really demoralize NIP. So what we saw there is Sean actually got the entry kill over at middle, but he was dropped down to very low HP. What he did with Hiko is they swap positions. Now Sean's at the back of B, holding that position down with his scout, which is a very good position. It's a headshot angle. He doesn't even have health, so it doesn't matter. If he gets Sean on the head, he's dead anyways. And now Hiko's going to be able to help out at middle. And um, actually, Cloud9 is rotating around towards uh, the A-bomb site, and Nip is down to four players, so they're really going to have to push in here and get the entry kills. Yeah, there are a couple of people down on long. Gerai will find a really good headshot onto Semphis, and that forces the rest back. So right now, Cloud9, instead of holding a bomb site, they're playing for a retake instead, and they do have even numbers, four and four, but no diffuse kit, which means they're going to have to move really quick here. If they spend too much time messing around, it's not going to work out, and they are quick indeed. So scared, right? Picks up the one, he gets the double, but he's going to go down here now. Shroud with a really quick return, two on two, and that bomb is not planted in the, well, it's planted in the go right position, but Freiburg, can he hold it? He walks out here, getting shot at from the backup and Fiflaren down on long. This should be working out all right. He's going to walk in. Can he see the player that stopped the fuse? And I think that's oh. going to be the end. Don't think they have enough time, even with the kills here. Oh, do they? Cloud9 in the third round. They get it done. Eco with the defuse. And also a triple kill coming in there. That is really impressive. I thought for sure that NIP had bought enough time. Ha that, that bomb, it was planted too wide. Piflaren had to peek out too wide from Long. But something that we, we saw there is that Gabriel was actually at the forefront of that push onto the catwalk. So once once Cloud9 saw, hey, get right to an A, no one's going to be behind us. Piflaren actually got a kill on, I believe that was Sean Gares, who was jumping up onto the Xbox at, over at middle. And Piflaren was, was able to pick him off. And then he actually snuck his way to Long. And Cloud9 didn't even expect it until Piflaren peeked all the way out to uh, kind of stop the... the the counter terrorist from defusing the bomb. Wow. I think Shroud picked up a triple kill again in, in that round. So just doing a, a lot of work at the moment. Hiko, obviously, the one with the defuse. So combined effort between the two when NIP maybe just seconds away from actually winning that. But that's what it's down to right now. Sean pushing up aggressively. Going to take down Forrest. He's got backup as well and nothing. But he goes down quick. Sean now caught in the middle of nowhere. They need to pick him up before he falls back. And there's going to be a assist to land a second headshot. Grenade up into the bomb site, but returned by Shroud. And now Freiburg coming in from long. Shroud is trapped between a rock and a hard place, but he's going to shoot his way out before Freiburg takes him here. One on mm. two, and they will pick it up. Get right with a headshot on Hiko. And that actually equalizes quite a bit. So I just want to take a look at the money here. We see $2,000, $3,000 on, uh, on Semphis there, but because Cloud9 invested so much into that other round, uh, force buying and surprise buying against Nip, even though they won, they only survived with two players. They had to re-equip because Nip won that round. They just reset the money bonus that Cloud9's getting. So they, they only got $1,400 for that round loss as opposed to uh, a higher number. If they lose this round as well, they'll get plus $1,900 onto what they currently have, which is around 2000 bucks. So they'll be looking at $3,900 next round. And if th they could afford a buy with Famas' scouts, kind of what they did in the previous round, but if they want ops, if they want full like smokes and flashes and nades to stop a rush or any type of execute, they're not going to have that equipment. So they might have to double save. Well, so then that's my next question to you then. Is it which would you prefer? You're, you're the leader of a variety of power. What would you do? Uh, it depends. I mean, it, it's often good to, good to get that surprise buy and get that opening kill and, you know, make be secure around. But after that, like, you need to make sure that everyone stays alive. Um, and that, that might mean surprise buy, do a buy. But instead of playing like default spots, stack a site. If they come to your site, let's say let's say uh, Cloud9 stacked on the A on that, and they sent one player at B, and then Nip ran into the A stack. I mean, Cloud9's gonna win that round. There's there's no way they they don't win the round, right? But then 
if, if NIP goes B and bypasses all the Cloud9 members, they keep all their weapons, they still have the armor, they still have the guns, they still have, they can buy the nades the next round, and it's like they did another eco and, and gave the round away. But, you know, they, they stack up on money, they build their economy. So they might have made a similar analysis because they actually don't go for the double eco, they do force it up here. They have even a couple of grenades and... Uh yeah. They, they have three decoys, a grenade, and a flash total, and the rest is gun. So they're going to have to play a, a type of style here where they're trying to get the kills. Um, sorry, just go toe to toe in in gun confrontations against Nip. Like they can't do a retake. They they need to fight. Yeah, stop NIP before the bomb goes down because they don't have a kit either. And they actually, last time they didn't, and they won it anyway. But it was really down to the narrowest of margins and NIP. Uh, they do. They really. They really do need a big lead here. I think in the in the first half, because Cloud9 have already proven how dangerous they are, and they're already a whole map up. Forest has the AWP. Can't see a thing down through that smoke. Cloud9 are going for a standard setup, so no no big stack going on. Just pretty much how you'd expect the CT side to hold here on Dust2. Mm -hmm. There's not much action going on. Just. Uh NIP just taking cat control. This is uh, pretty much as default as you can make a default. But they are about to actually execute here in, in just a moment. And uh, it looks like they're actually just trying to throw out a little bit of a bait or a fake over at mid. But here's going to come the push. Yeah, rushes up on so long, flashes as well. Fiflaren just dives into the smoke. Shroud's going to take out one of his teammates here. Are they realizing Semphis gets one? And now Fiflaren is in a really weird position. Turns around against the firing squad that's down in the pit. Hiko goes down and is somehow into a 2-1-3 with Cloud9. Sean Gaz on just 8 HP. And it's going to be Forrest alone. He's got the bomb and I think he's actually going to be able to put it down here. But winning a 1-on-3 right now, that'd be huge for Forrest. And because he actually has time to maybe scope them as they come in, that might even be an option. There's an, oh, a shot to the hip, and actually Shroud survives. That would have been a perfect start. Forrest turns Double around, kill. and are they gonna come from here? Flash once, he's waiting. If they peek at the same time, there's the one kill. Forrest turns around, sees Zed in hand. Shroud is right there, Forrest takes him down. Now, it's a triple. Can he get the quad? He's got five bullets, oh. he misses the shot, and nothing takes him down. And there's enough time for the defuse. Nothing gonna oh, go, no! Are you kidding us? Not, nothing runs, Forrest wins it! Forrest, are you kidding me? That was a great, because Forrest pushed out the doors there and got the hip shot onto, what was it, Shroud there? Yeah. It del and then and then when he uh, posted on the tunnels, they were kind of trying to bait out the shot, wait for Shroud to get close to the door so they could push in together at the same time. Forrest got the kill on the tunnels player. Shroud was already down to like 20 HP from that hip shot. Forrest jumped out at him, got outside of the bomb site. That took so much time for nothing to run from the tunnels, through the site, outside, kill Forrest, get back to the bomb that he just didn't have enough time to defuse it. And there we see no money on the Cloud9 side. They see nothing with a gun, but that's about it. And that's a great, great momentum boost for NIP there. It has to be. I thought for sure that there was going to be enough time. Then it looked like it. It's really difficult sometimes for us to hear the exact bomb tick, but um, yeah. A little bit, a little bit um, of noise here at the Gamescom um, just a little, venue. Just a little. Half a million people or so <laughs> around. Get right up on the box, up on. Uh, the top of uh, a dark and waiting for anyone to come in here. They might actually double peek him. Get right. Controls the spray against one. Controls the spray again and almost takes down Hiko. That was very close. 14 HP, but Hiko's going to run away. Can't pick up the rifle, unfortunately. And um, yeah, getting these kills in eco rounds, it's really, really great. But it's it's almost worth double or triple if you can pick up a rifle in return. Mm -hmm. I think uh, NIP is just going to actually react here. They, they know that Cloud9 pushed into the tunnels. They got a kill there. They did a lot of damage to the second player there. They know that B is probably if not weak, it, it, sorry, if not empty, it's weak. So they're going to just regroup and take the site. And that's exactly what they're doing. Cloud9, they showed their presence over at B, and then they rotated over to A, expecting Nip to kind of run into that stack. But Nip was too smart for it, and they went the complete opposite direction. There is a sense of determination coming out here from NIP, almost like they're saying, if, if you want to defeat us here, it's going to have to be on our third map. We don't want to exit the quarterfinals in just two. Mm -hmm. Obviously, 
we're only halfway through the first half of this map, so it's a little bit too soon to pass any judgment. Yeah. And Cloud9 are on the less favored side, so there's some things to consider there. They've actually got one AK on uh, nothing. I think that was saved, but Hikos also picked up one. Yep. Sean does go down. So actually, this is still a really good round from Cloud9 in terms of gaining some economy back here. Yep, and uh, Shroud's actually trying to just keep the NIP players in the bomb site so that they die with the bomb explosion, but he's unable to uh, kind of make any NIP players commit. NIP. They save uh, four weapons. Get Right was the only casualty there. Hiko did pick up an AK in the end. So, I mean, overall, Cloud9, they got a, a weapon out of it. Not too bad. But um, just going back a few rounds, when, when we saw Fifth Lauren pushing through that smoke at long, the purpose of that strat, usually you don't put, like, two players pit side if you're a counter-terrorist team. You put one guy at the corner, one guy in the pit. So if Lauren was going to push through the smoke with a flashbang and kill anybody who's at the corner there, it just happened to be that Cloud9 had two people in the pit. And... Wow! Oh, Semph is doing something we've sometimes seen Titan do in the past. Shoxi or someone like Smith might push up and do this. So that's a really, really nice move. Yeah. Catches one off guard, but Hiko is going to go down and return. And that's Forrest with the headshot. Now pushing in here. Can't get the spray quite right. Looking for the kill on nothing. Gerai will take Semphis in the background. That looks almost accidental. And now Forrest is up here. Nothing is caught between a rock and a hard play. He's going to go down. Exist was sandwiching him from the middle of the map. But Gerai coming in actually too. Now it's Sean Gares and Shroud. 2 on 4 and they kind of are moving forward. Should they go for this retake? I mean, at this point, if they know the health, if you look at the health of, of NIP, they have, you know, 1 health, 28 health, 18 health. At this point, like, if they knew it, uh, maybe you go for it. But Cloud9 there, they were invested. They had two ops, they had three rifles, they had full nades. I mean, you need to keep as much money as possible. And in this situation, two versus four, you have to save. So this is absolutely the right play by Get Right with the huge kill onto Sean in the pit. It's hard enough to get a shot on that with an AWP, let alone a, a rifle. So amazing shot there by Get Right. And I think Get Right knows exactly where Shroud is. So he's just going to bait him out, wait for his teammates to come reinforce him, and push Shroud together at the last second. But Shroud's going to hold on to oh. the AWP. That was so close, and Sean was actually scoped up towards that exact angle. Looked like it was going to work out just fine for him, but they lose the, the one player there and only is able to save one rifle. Seven to one, and Cloud9's nine, economy is really not good, but they have managed to purchase uh, in this round anyway. For Masters, grenades as well, and two AWPs, and that's a great pick of Semphis. Again, down the middle, picking up the orping here, and actually out of Forest in the middle. Exist is trying to see if he can... Click up that sniper rifle in return, but Sean is still in a very dangerous position here. Scare is going to be sneaking around the corner. They missed the shot. So um, there's an end to the mad madness here for Cloud9. But that opening pick, that should mean that Cloud9 can play a little bit more safely. Oh, Semph is very nearly getting picked up. That was dangerously close. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Semphis going to the back of B there with that low HP, but here is the A push coming from NIP. Yeah, Shroud down to the pit this time. They have the position you were talking about earlier, and it's a crossfire. It seems to be working out. Sean's picked up a kill. Shroud with the kill. Sean goes down, and Shroud is going to be headshot by Exist. Now Get Right has to do what Get Right does best. There's 50 seconds left. He's in a one on three. Jumps down, and that's a little too bold. Hiko waiting for him will take him out. So finally, a second round for the North American team. And that's pretty good news. They've been struggling actually ever since they lost the pistol round to try and see if they could bring it back. And by the time they finally do, it actually turns out NIP don't have a brilliant economy yet. They mm -hmm. have two people with enough uh, to buy the next round if they lose yep. it, but they could they could bounce back here quick at uh, C9. Yeah, but uh, the other thing that we have to keep in mind is C9's got two ops right here. Uh, that's really good in the sense that you can take the long-range battles. You can, ooh, they're going to do a mid-push and nothing's going to get the entry kill. Nicely done, and even Geroid falling, that's probably even more important at this point. Grenade in return, Forrest low on health, he's gonna go down after picking up the one kill. Can they catch Shroud here by the car? They're already rushing up, Exist goes down, too many grenades to handle, and the bomb is dropped in the middle of long. This is a disaster for NIP. Freiburg coming up short, and he's not gonna pick up the kill here. This is a really big turnaround, and instead of allowing NIP to figure out a strat to set up on the map any kind of default play, Cloud9 decided to take it away from them. That was a page right out of Shoxy's book, in my opinion. Yeah. I've seen other people do it. I've seen it run in Source uh, back in the day. But that's that's a, an aggressive push. You're looking at lower B. Uh, you've got an op supporting mid. You've got a person running up mid. You don't expect a, a counter-terrorist just to be sprinting up mid like that. And terrorists, 
they normally don't have, you know, more than one person watching that at that point. You, you know, you split off one person's going outside long, you got a person going into the tunnels, you've got a person going around to palm tree. So it was a great opportunity for Cloud9 to get an early pick off there. And that's exactly what they need to do if they want to keep uh, their m money. Now they have enough money to, if the, in case they lose, they'll still have enough. An IP here, they don't really have enough money anymore. They're, you, we, we see a Galil buy from Exist. They don't really have many nades, so this is the end of uh, Nip's money. They need to start picking up rounds if they want to, uh, if they want to keep buying. Otherwise, they're going to have to eco. They need an opening kill. That's what they need right now. And traditionally, Freiburg is the guy you look for to get that. And he has been getting some good ones, especially in the pistol round. That was mm -hmm. really impressive. But they could they could use him right here. And they do put him forward on uh, on catwalk. They're not going to find anyone just yet. Actually, a pretty heavy mid presence coming out here from the uh, CT side. Get out on lock. Do have one guy, I think, with an AWP exist. Sneaking out, there's one guy in pit. Can they make this work? Nothing. Takes down, get right. Over on the A ramp. Sean Gares is there. He has the AWP. They're very close right now. Shroud's going to help down. Help out. Take down for Flaren. And now, Semphis falls. Bomb is attempted to be put down here. And Sean, still alive. Really close. I have no idea how they've not found him yet. Hiko fighting it out. Sean comes in. Helps out with the pistol. Picks up the double. And the round is lost for NIP. And it's our fourth round for Cloud9. They just didn't find Sean throughout all that time. And he picks up a double kill because of it. And uh, that's, what, two rounds in a row for, for Cloud9. But NIP was able to get the bomb plant, so they should be getting um, about 2,800 bucks. We might see if, how much money do they have? They could force buy, theoretically, if they get Galil's. It depends on what they want to do. They are going to opt to just uh, do an eco round. We do see an armor buy on Get Right. Uh, we're going to see one smoke, one flash, a few smokes and flashes. So we might see maybe a B split? I actually am a big fan of, of this kind of investment because obviously these grenades and the armor won't prevent NIP from buying in the next round, but it'll give them maybe an opportunity. A slight opportunity, right? Can't win the lottery if you don't play. Shroud down in the pit. It's going to be peeking up here and exist. Just a kind of trap there. I think they, they realize he's there. Sean, easy pickings here and a really cool triple kill coming out even as an anti-eco that's not bad shooting at all forest has stolen the oh. awp and he's not going to get the headshot on for on nothing here limiting the economy right now for the oh. oh forest please triple kill and now the bomb is still in the middle this might just be it, the round where Cloud9's economy is broken once again. Forrest smokes off and he's going to be running through his own smoke. That in itself is a bit of a trick coming out, but another smoke from the CT side. Forrest jumping through the middle oh. and he's going to be taken down. Sean, quad kill, saves the round for Cloud9. But that's an expensive round. That's an expensive round. That was great individual play from Forrest there. Even just chipping away at the economy. I don't know if uh, if maybe he should have saved in that situation. He did have 50 seconds to work with. So, I mean, going for that round, it's completely fine, but uh, perhaps saving the yacht? Mm, he had enough money for, for armor and for uh, the grenades in the next round. It just depends on what kind of style they want to run here. Now, it looks like Cloud9 is running the dual op setup, so... Uh, I mean, Nip, if, the, if they want to win rounds, maybe mid B is the way to go against two ops. Could be. You land the right smoke or the right flashbang, you, you prevent yeah. the orb from actually working as effectively as, uh, as it otherwise would. Because at this range, this is what Semphis really wants. Someone to come and peek him, see if he can figure it out. Now they are going to try and put some shots through, but it's not quite going to connect. And as soon as it smoked off, he decides better to back up and, and just find a new angle where the, same, where the range is roughly the same. Let's see, Shroud smoking off, just trying to waste some time here on NIP's part until they can actually take short in case they want to. But again, very standard setup here for Cloud9. So they seem to mix up, you know, crazy aggression with just completely uh, vanilla setups. Mm -hmm. Must be frustrating for NIP if they don't know which round is which. Nothing. Hiding in the smoke, Semp is up here, gonna get taken down, Freiburg, entry frag, get right, they exist, right, follow up, and it's gonna be Shroud all the way in the A-bomb side, and that was basically one second and the round was lost. Yeah, they, they came out through middle, they got the entry kill at middle, um, they got two entry kills over at middle, actually, there were two counter terrorists over in that area, and then Getright came out of tunnels as soon as that pressure was made, and the attention from all the B players was focused, you know, Hiko was looking towards mid now, there's a mid at the push, Getright's able to come in and, and get the kill on, on the B player, so Cloud9 needs to save this round. Yeah. NIP not even losing a single player there, that's great, they picked up an op, Getright's got it right now, so they can do whatever they want next round, they're gonna have full grenades, they can do whatever. 
this is pretty much what you called for, so um, we'll have to see here. Sean falling back and with the AWP, they're going to in the tournament, they steal the orb away. Shroud trying to survive, Forrest will take him down, and three members survive for NIP, so making sure nothing is saved here for Cloud9. 8-5 for the first half and a pretty good situation for NIP, but Cloud9 do have enough to force it up. Yeah, but and they could actually pass some guns around, but yeah. as, as we can see in the money on the left side of the screen right now, they can't really afford... I mean, we've got one kit. We've got nades, but we've got one kit. Sean has no armor, so I mean, it's not an ideal buy going into the second last round here. They, they need... If Cloud9 wants to, to end the half well, they need to get all the people to stay alive this round and win it. Flaren waiting for someone to go a little bit aggressive up here. They're going to smoke off once behind them and sit in front. I think that's a bit of a fake. That's an yep. audio fake almost. They, yep. they wanted Fiflaren to peek because they hear that smoke. So nicely done. I love these tiny games from, from Cloud9. They're as, as brutal and as, and as aim heavy as they are, they're also a pretty intelligent team after all. Yeah. But that's that's more... I, ooh, there's a beat yeah. push going on here. I think GetRights just spotted it and actually got a nice direct nade. 54 damage on that. And but instantly returned. <laughs> down to 49, but yeah, nicely done. And we, we saw this this round from Cloud9 before in, in one of their eco rounds where they pushed into the tunnels. They made pressure. They lost one but uh, killed Get Right at the same time. And then Nip just reacted by going back to beat. Are we going to see the same result? Just like it. That smoke certainly is a big indication, right? Bouncing up onto the window there and then now the CT spawn. If they went for B right now, it could actually be pretty good. There are two people defending and oh, Fiflaren gets picked up. He's waited the whole round right at that spot, hoping to get someone off guard. And now B is open. Freiburg goes down in the middle though. They're going to be able to take the B bomb side, but can they hold it? Everyone is coming in here from Cloud9. It's going to be a 5 on 3 retake. Forest, really important kill there on Sahiko, oh. but it's not enough. Nothing will take him down. Eight seconds left. The bomb is being put down, and Exist is going to be alone. One on four here with an AK in hand, 30 bullets, and it's not enough here. Nothing drops him down, so they did end up going for the B bomb site, but they lost two members before it happens. And actually, I think That's fine. maybe Freiburg in the middle was, was pretty good, but, but if you fly in and see spawn, that was very unfortunate timing for him. Yeah, I thought you were talking about Cloud9 losing two members, they can pass guns around. Yeah, Freiburg, um, if he had let his teammates go into the B first, I mean, they, they, they had no contest. Obviously, like we can see, there were no Cloud9 members in the B bomb site. Um, but had Freiburg waited, and then his teammates gone into B, planted the bomb, and then he comes out with the flank, that could have worked a lot better, but this is hindsight. You, you can't know in that situation. In that situation, I would have expected, oh, they pushed through long, they know exactly what's going on, they know we're hitting B, so we need to make a little bit of uh, presence somewhere else so we can get into B safely. If Laren's trying to come up with a new position, and they still have that double orb setup, which has proven very effective, and it's gonna work again. Sean will take down Forrest in the middle here. Semphis is ready and waiting. They're gonna grenade him back. I say Semphis has been pretty good at he's trying, but if there isn't an option, he instantly switches. Like he's not he's not over committing to the position that he's in. Yeah. Hey, he's just looking off for a pickoff, but I mean in this situation, you've already got a five on four. You don't need to try to get a kill. You've already got the advantage. Now you can just sit back and relax and let them execute into you. So I think Semphis, once you realize that, hey, no one's going to poke their head out, let's just get out of here. Uh, grenade train in. Sean has a very, very good position here. They could end up in a 5 on 3 before the take is even on. That's a shot right to the feet of Freiburg. He's down to 4 HP, and Sean comes in. Actually, Semphis picking up Freiburg. He was solo already, soft enough. Sean close range, takes down one. No scope, not connecting. He's going to go down, but it is a 2 on 4 here. Get right and Fiflaren left, and Fiflaren misses the shot. It's on get right, 1 on 3. He's going to turn around. He's boxed in, and he's not got time anyway here. So 7 to 8 in the first half for Cloud9. That has to be considered pretty impressive considering how close it was in the beginning to them just losing they could this could have finished up what 11 4 in favor of nip yeah i mean them just crawling back they are at they were at a disadvantage they did the force by they uh they won one round and lost they had to go into an eco so i mean right there they were at the disadvantage and they just crawled right back into the game pistol round seems to be of, of complete importance here for NIP. Oh, for sure. If NIP wants to close this game out, they need the pistol round. If they want to stay in the tournament, they need this pistol round. It, it, it means a world of difference.
With this much pressure on, do you have the the nerve to go for any kind of special setup, or are you going to play this pistol around completely standard for an IP? Um, well, actually, we see Peter there. He's got a notebook and he's uh, chatting up with. Uh, he's got the um, headset on, so he can actually talk to the team in the in the team speak. So it looks like maybe they're thinking. Does Cloud9 do a strat fairly frequently where we can counter strat it? Or are we going to just play our own game and this is just the strat that we, we already planned out. This is what we're going to do. I'm just reiterating it to you guys so you guys are all just like fresh. No one's making mistakes. Everyone's doing it drilled. Because we, we can see in the background there, like Peter's just calling it out. This is what we're doing. All right. That sixth man has, I mean, NIP I would say have been playing better at this tournament than they were, for instance, at Gfinity. Yeah. But is it good enough? That's obviously the big question here. A sixth man on the team, I think, in, in the long run, is going to be a very big advantage. But uh, they haven't had a lot of time to work with Peter either, so it, may, it might be too short a time for us to really make the big difference here. Some shots at the crowd. Guys, I think if you want to see a third map, you're going to have to cheer a little bit for NIP because they do need it. So can we see some claps here? They need your support. There are some people holding up some signs there. Capper, of course. We don't see the Twitch chat, but it's it's there in spirit Capper, anyway. Capper, Capper. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have NIP and Cloud9, second half, second map of the quarterfinals. Cloud9, just uh, nine rounds shy of knocking NIP out of the tournament and moving on to the semis, which would be a hugely impressive result for this North American team. Now let's get it on here. Forrest taking a battle in the middle, oh. and nothing comes out on top. USPS at that range should probably win, but it doesn't. And that is not the opening that they needed now. And Cloud9 actually moving fairly aggressively up onto Catwalk right afterwards, but they slow it down. So I'm wondering if they got... It looked like there was like an instinctual reaction from the team combined, and then someone saying, wait. Well, there is a smoke on Cat, which might be just a deterrent, a small deterrent, um, albeit a deterrent. And it looks like that grenade's actually going to do quite a bit of damage. We are going to see the multiple spawn drop into a yeah. B-split. Fiflaren, Freiburg with a headshot. Now they're going to go back to B. There are still two people holding here, and one of them is Freiburg. He's already picking up the one headshot, going for a second one here. He's going to... Oh, Exist actually steals the kill, but it's Hiko going down with the bomb. Now they know everything. That one bomb spot means now the whole NIP can make a joint rotation to save this round. A must round, a must win round here for NIP. And it is a four on three. Nothing. And Shroud very low on health. Freiburg picks up another kill. That's now a double, taking down nothing. And they have such good control here. Get right. Is going to be going down. And Sean is next to fall. Exist with the headshot, going for a triple Freiburg, and he's going to pick it up. First pistol round, Freiburg wins it. Second one, he does exactly the same thing. So right now, he has he has a lot of credit to, uh, to receive here. Two things I want to talk about that round. One, Forrest. That was that was a classic nip setup. Um, I think they run that pistol like a lot of the time. Forrest will always peak mid with a USP with armory. Normally, he gets at least one, if not, you know, four headshots over at middle. There, he, he got headshot just instantly. But what Cloud9 did there was they smoked off um, CT spawn at A side, they flashed over A, and they dropped two or three people, and they went mid to B. Once Nip identified that, hey, they're dropping through spawn, they're going to do a B split, what the, the reaction of the B players was brilliant. Exist in Freiburg, they said, you know what, let's not get crunched from two different angles. They pushed into tunnels, and they isolated it. They killed uh, whoever was in there. I think it was Sean with the bomb. Kiko. Kiko with the, with, with the bomb, though? Yeah. Yeah, and then that's basically what won, won the round for them. Yeah, gotta love that instant decision making. You really don't have a lot of time to make that call either, so you've gotta gotta do it quick and gotta commit to it. Exist then, free flaring, and exist with a great triple here before Gerai goes down, leaving Hiko alone. Has picked up a, a bit of a rifle. Oh. It's not enough. Hiko goes down, and exist will be the one with the grenade to finish the round. So, pretty good job for NIP, and it's really important. I mean, confidence wise, economically, NIP did everything going in that direction, but I, I can't help but shake a feeling that Cloud9 have tricks prepared for the second half too. Uh, they, they probably do have tricks prepared, but or what we're going to see a lot from Cloud9 is even if they have $3,700 a piece, they're going to buy. The, anytime they can buy a Ford AK armor, they're going to buy. It's a straight up. It, it's what they do. And I think NIP can realize this, and I think that's exactly what they're going to do at the moment. Um, just kind of figure out, okay, what, what guns do, does Cloud9 have? And NIP was actually ready for this. They had the pharmacies on the second round. N they, none of them had any uh, was it, SMG guns. Yeah. They didn't have any um, 
shotguns. They didn't have any pistols. I mean, uh, I think Fiflarin had a pistol, obviously, now because he has an op. So, I mean, great read from Nip. They knew that Cloud9 was going to do the early buy on the third round. They did in the first half as well. Cloud9 actually, one of the members, I didn't catch which one, but I think it must have been um, nothing. They actually took the battle in the middle against the orb for a while, which is which says something, I think, also about just the mentality going into a player like nothing. He's really, he's ready to try and see if he can land that one lucky headshot and, and start off great. Fiflaren peeks out here and a really good kill comes in, punishes the guy we were just talking about and smokes it off, and there's still um, another guy down here on long. So this is a pretty good hold coming out here from NIP so far. Yep. Okay, right, going to switch it up here. And great positions from... Uh from the players over at A. It's, it's an A retake setup. They know that the bomb's planted, but the terrorist team, the Cloud9 team, is isolated to Cat, so it's just gonna be an A retake coming up from CT spawn. Exist coming up. He got a kill, but Freiburg went down himself. Yeah, Exist with another one. Exist with a quick triple. Excellent play here from the NIP captain, and Hiko's gonna try and save it, but as you said, the bomb is planted in a horrible position right now, and Hiko goes down, so it will be the defuse. Retake. Yep. And as soon as you're in that situation as a terrorist team, you get the bomb plant down in that position. You need, like, you're isolated to cat, you're isolated to the quad box. You need to get the kills on the counter terrorists as they're coming up the CT ramp. We saw only one kill, and I think believe that was on Freiburg, but Exist coming up the ramp, he was able to get himself a double, a triple kill, and then he was able to get onto the A ramp, and then once once the counter terrorists are on that bomb site, it's just, it's game over. One person gets on the bomb, one person holds for quad, and th the other people just lock down cat. But we are going to see uh, Cloud9 actually. Forcing it up. Forcing it up. Like Just I said. like you predicted. It's yeah. almost uh, like you do... Are you like a legendary Eagle Master or something? It's like you do play this game. Um, I'm actually Supreme uh, First Class Commander. What? I don't what actually it? know. I'm not, sure the, I'm not sure the ranks really... Uh, they don't really reflect translate anything. So well I'm actually globally, but it, yeah, honestly, it doesn't mean anything. There, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be... It's going to be drama beast on that one. All right, smokes are off. Really aggressive move coming out from Cloud9, and Gerard is dead, so safe with Flaren. That would have been critical if he hadn't been there. Exist with the kill. A double exist, really doing massive work here in the rifle rounds against Cloud9 on the second half. And two on four, and they actually played very safely in IP. I think they're making yep. some smart choices. So right here, they, they did the same setup that, that they did last round. They got, uh, they fell back on A. They're forcing the Cloud9 members to do a bad plan. This, in this case, it's behind the solo box. But where are they going to play from? They have to play from a site, and they have to play from Cat. In this situation, they're just going to get overrun from three different angles. Freiburg and Getright are going to pick up the kills. I mean, they knew that round was in the bag. They just needed to take their time. And that's exactly what they did. They only lost one person on that retake. And they got in there. So what's the answer? Because now we've identified, and obviously it's a little bit easier for us here. So, you know, if you're flowering down on long, forcing the players that come into the a bombs, and even yeah. if they take it, they do a bad plant. What can Cloud9, apart from going to B, obviously, but if you're flowering isn't, um, is there a way to deal with that? Um, I mean, they, they had the right idea. I mean, one of those rounds, they, they went basically a man down as a five on four. That was for and getting an early kill. Actually, we're going to see an eco rush here, so we are going to see Exist picking up a couple kills or getting... Uh, they're really committing to it, but oh, Hiko Sean Gas with a really good double return here. They are low on health, and Gerai will luckily save the day down there and taking down Sean Gas. And up on short, Fiflaren doesn't want to take the duel. I don't blame him. Gerai and Forrest will clean it up. That looked almost, for a second like that was scary. Yeah, that looked almost like uh, Titans actually anti Hiko. Titan does a nice fast 3 2 split on uh, long and short A and just collapse on the. On the counter terrorist defense there. The counter terrorists are too focused on on long and they fall back short. But we are going to see actually uh, the auto snipe by, by Exist, which is a kind of a different pace for an IP. I mean, we didn't, we, uh, did we see it last game? No. We saw Cloud9 doing it last game. We yeah. had the dual auto sniper set up. But not Exist. And I'm actually a little bit worried because Exist has been super mobile over at long and he's been hitting great shots. He's at 24 yeah. kills right now with the rifle. So maybe the switch up is really what they need, but at the same time, I'm worried about changing something that's been working so well. I mean, it's, it's great to have him just fragging really hard with the M4 and moving around, being mobile, but getting the auto sniper, it's such a powerful weapon. It's such a, it's a weapon that you can, oh no, he went down to Sempis. This yeah. is a great start for Cloud9 in this case. Five versus four, or five on four advantage for Cloud9. They still have a minute on the clock. Oh, Forest goes down as well. So now things are looking a little bit worse. Five on three, and that B bomb site is only defended by Freiburg. How big can he go here? He's going to have to come up huge with some kills. Trapped in the corner, he only takes the one really tough position for him to deal with. Four members actually rotating around there. And Fiflaren goes down. Semphis with a really sick pickoff. And now get right looking for exits, I assume. 
And it pretty much has to be it. So I'm wondering if what just happened this round is that because Cloud9 have been going A bomb site for quite a while and Exist has been there defending it, they decide, all right, we'll give you the auto sniper, we'll put you in B and try and anticipate Cloud9 doing a B push. Um, it, it definitely could have been a possibility. It's, it's too difficult to get into Nip's head in that situation. Um, I mean, realistically, they, they've been playing the same setup, a, a retake every round. So, I mean, Cloud9, when they have been going A, it's been, like, the rounds have been close. It's just the retake exists with coming up and going huge on those, those rounds. Like I said at the beginning of the game, individual play is going to be the world of difference here. So, if Exist wasn't hitting those shots, Cloud9 probably would have picked up those rounds anyways. 13 to 8. Definitely still a chance for a comeback here for, for Cloud9. The gap is not that big because of NIP's economy, mostly I'd say five rounds, but start ecoing it is a lot different. Fuflaren has picked up the AWP. Get right couldn't save one the last time. They actually have to invest into it, and <laughs> Cloud9 have stolen the counter terrorist auto sniper. They traded. They traded the uh, op for the auto. So uh, interesting to see why that was done. Um, yeah, they need that technology from Judge Dredd where you can't actually fire the rifle unless oh, yeah. you're actually from the police. But um, don't don't add that to the game, please, Valve. 22 rounds, and unless it's you add the bazooka. <laughs> bazooka, indeed. No. No. Just okay. no. Okay. It's the 22nd round steal. Mm. What do you predict? Who's winning from this point out? I know you can't know, but if you had to take a guess. A minute left on the clock. Cat control from uh, Cloud9, that's all we see. There's going to be, uh, you, we can't even see an execute, there's, there's no smokes. It's going to be just a straight up aim battle. It's going to be an aim duel coming out as soon as the smokes clear over that long. Yeah, but Cloud9's tournament run so far has relied really heavily on straight up aim battles that they've actually won. And Gerrite's down here in the pit, Fuflaren missed the first shot. Gerrite has to come up huge and he's going to get a free chance to do it. Takes down Sean Gas. Fuflaren close range, points one, but almost gets the second one. Semphis is going to drop the back up. Freiburg goes down, two on three here. They can still retake this and Gerrite has the auto sniper going for a long range shot here. Could get the kill, does get the kill. Semphis goes down, now it's two on two. This could be resurrection time for NIP. Winning this round would completely reset Cloud9, and that could put them very close to a third map. But is it going to happen? Forrest comes in, there's the clutch, and now Shroud is actually crunched in here. He does not have a lot of time. He's going to have to pick up the kill. There's the one. Can he get the kill and save Cloud9 for a moment? He does! Excellent play from Shroud, and look how cool he is. A tiny smile there, but he looks cold as ice. That's cool to say. Exactly. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> I, if you want to break into no, Foreigner, then to. go I'm for it. I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we saw great play from Forrest and Get Right on that 2v3 clutch over there. I mean, Get Right was just kind of baiting out where Shroud playing at, where's he going to be. As soon as he located him, he let Forrest start pushing up at a position. But Shroud just hit a nuts shot onto, onto Forrest, and then he played it in the one versus one knew exactly where Gatwright was going to be and shut him down there as well. So 13 to 9 is a scoreline in favor of Nip, but NIP on the eco round right now. Cloud9 realizes this and they're just uh, taking their time. They're, they're going to clear everything slowly. They do have the ops and AKs in hand, but they've thrown everything if they even bought nades. Yeah. Freiburg here, they're looking for a boost. I'm not sure this is going to be as successful as NIP would like. They're already being spotted and um, they are going to be falling back if not just dying. Freiburg and Exist goes down both to uh, nothing. And no kills being picked up here for NIP, which is actually a bit of a shame because if nothing else, what they what they need to do is keep Cloud9 away from us from the money here. They need to make sure that once NIP win a round again, that it's going to be uh, an eco for the North American team. That way they can maybe close out the game much quicker than they otherwise would be able to. For Flaren, hoping to keep someone with the bomb so they can blow up just like we saw uh, Shroud do previously. And they're not going to work out. He's going to steal the CZ-75 uh, from his teammate's corpse and then run away. I think at the at this scoreline, um, with Cloud9 getting that, that round with basically no casualties, Cloud9 is going to be able to build the economy to a point where they, they're probably going to be able to buy the rest of the half unless something crazy happens. Um, oh, actually, yeah, we see $10,000 on Shroud, and that's basically the world of difference. If he had dropped the gun to nothing there, I mean, he would have had $8,000. Nothing would have had $3,000. It's the Bank of Canada. Uh, well, Bank of... Yeah. He's from the same city as me, actually, so... There you go. Maybe it's something in the water, then. M maybe. It's filtered. 
That's good. So that it, does, good. it doesn't taste like chlorine? Yeah, well, all my American teammates, every time we travel someplace, they're like, do you drink tap water? <laughs> is it, is it good? Is it okay? Oh, wait a minute. Semph is sneaking into the middle. He does miss the shot, but that's a very bold move, and there's a reason for it. Semph has been taking so many good shots. Fiflaren does miss one here, and now he's going to fall back. Are they going to play for the retake again? It's been working so well for NIP, so why not do it? And in case you've missed the previous rounds here, oh, Cloud9. Yeah, they're going to have to go for the default plant here. Four and five retake coming up from NIP, and as long as they're controlling long, what are Cloud9 going to do? A lot of smokes. They're going to be isolated to Cat. And it's all up to uh, NIP coming up oh. the CT slope. Bit of a touchdown grenade there. Nothing already down to 60-something health. Uh, Forrest looking for a headshot here on anybody he can find. Nothing with the kill. Exists with the return. Forrest with a really good headshot. That bomb ticking away, but it's a one for Hiko here. He's alone. One on two. He picks up a couple of crucial kills. Can they get the disfuse? He's running in. Hiko, is he going to clutch it? Not this time. So close for Hiko. Nearly got a one on four. And you can see the relief on Nip's face. We saw Gowright doing an exhale. Fifth Lion was kind of getting up and just like, ah, oh, that was a close round. Exist was low in health. He ran out of ammo in his primary weapon. He had to pull out the pistol. Hiko almost won that, and that would have been massive. Like, right there, that would have been soul-crushing for Nip. It would have broken their economy. They would have been saving this round, which means Cloud9, not only would it be 11-13, they would have probably pulled it 12-13. to I mean, that right there could have won Cloud9 the game. And it's tempting to say it would have almost been a sort of a classic Hiko moment at this point in Dust 2. That's really something that we've known him for. But Fiflaren this time, no stuttering going on. Instantly drops Shroud, who's been playing so well. So, wow, if NIP win this round, Steel, are we going to see that third map? Um, most likely, actually, yeah. I mean, it's, it's looking that, ro that way. Five versus four as well. So this is shaping up to be a very good round for Nip. They're still going to play the same setup that they've, they've been playing. And you know what? It's, it makes sense, too, at this position. If Fiflarin's able to connect a shot over from, from this spot that he's at at the moment, he's been un unable to the last few times that uh, Cloud9's pushed. If he's able to get one pick off before Cloud9 makes it to the site, it's going to make it like a world of difference. Flaren down on long. Let's see if he can. He's changed it up here. He's looking for the kill. Gonna miss it once. And then IP reset. But this time there's a difference from Cloud9. They have a bit of a backstab going on here. Hiko waiting for it. Gerai waiting even more. He sees the shoulder. He's gonna wait for it. And Hiko goes down. I love the attempt from Cloud9. They've, they've figured this out too. But it wasn't enough. Gerai flanking him. I mean, he's the master of this lurking role. He sees it coming. Now Semphis goes down, Fiflaren shot through the box, gonna drop him, this could be it ladies and gentlemen, nothing comes up here on short, he's alone, one on four, and it's gonna be Forrest and Gerrite to seal the deal, that is map point here on Dust2 for the ninjas in pajamas, and now Cloud9, they have to win five rounds in a row with a very limited economy to try and force overtime, but they will actually have enough to buy on three of their players, and I guess the last two are gonna be alright, this is not a completely worthless buy. It's not a worthless buy, but I mean, only two players can really afford to send it, send the team out. Hiko, he buys the Glil, he buys the the Kevlar. No helmet. I'd be surprised. Um, I'd be surprised to see them try to. Oh, what are they going to do here? Well, out on long. They're rushing they in. They're going to gonna go super aggressive. There's a Molotov as well. It exists. Can't see a thing. For about five seconds, he's blind and he escapes alive. I think he's actually a little bit more than he could have asked for there. And that puts an end to. Or sort of puts a stop to the rush from Cloud9. Yep. And actually, what Nip did there, a great reaction. They put the op on A site. If any of the Cloud9 members get into the pit, Fiflaren's going to take, uh, take their head off. And then Nip's going to oh, look. Oh, oh, come on. Fiflaren, definitely a bit of a turret up here in the bomb side. Hitting them shots right here. But Ooh, Shroud wow, is going to return. AK versus AWP. And it is the rifle that comes out on top. Get right, drops nothing in the middle. Freiburg waiting for the crossover. Just one click here, and he's going to let them pass. Oh. Semphis with a kill on Gerrite. It's not quite over yet. It's a three on three. And Cloud9, they are not going to give up easily. Grenade up there, going to do no damage at all, in fact. So now this retake's really tough. I think the bomb plant this time for once is actually pretty good for Cloud9. It's, oh. plan, it's planned for the platform down long, so if we do see a smoke, which we don't see because Nip doesn't have one, it's going to be a very, very difficult retake. Yeah, Sean picks up the one, ducks down, buying time, <laughs> really good headshot here, and Freiburg's gonna fall to Semphis. So, yeah, Shroud, I mean, he's, he only got the one kill, but it might have been the most important kill of the round. It's uh, called an impact frag. You can get frags all day, all night, but 
they could mean nothing. That frag right there, that meant the round. They got the kill on the upper that secured long. Tempest was able to run up, get another kill himself. They were all able to cross long. That one frag was the entire difference in that round. That puts NIP back to an eco. Freiburg because they're on a bit of a sneak here. And the rest of NIP grouped up somewhere else on the map. Freiburg's going to let one guy by here, and that's Sean going down. Picks up a rifle, goes for a little bit more. Can he get it? That smoke's actually going to mean he can't see anyone there. But now Cloud9 are instantly alert. They realize something's up here. NIP, they want to see if they can close it in an eco round. It's a great reaction from Cloud9 and NIP. We're going to basically see a... Oh. showdown going on here. Cloud9's got full long control, they've got sight control, they're in Goose. But are they realizing where Exist is? I think they're focused on everywhere but this one spot here. Forest makes a jump, they're making a lot of noise in IP, they're trying to distract I think. They realize that Exist has not been discovered yet. Shroud going for the plant, almost goes down, he actually the cancel hit, oh, buying more time for NIP. And now can he peek out at the right time? Exist not gonna get the timing down. And Forest gets dropped by Hiko, there's Exist with a headshot Shroud, but it's a second too late. Hiko comes up with a really big triple kill, and now down from long. Geraint will pick up Hiko, it's a 2-1-2, two two. he's charging up with this P2000 in hand, and it won't stop Semphis from taking him down. The jump to spot him, and now this is going to be almost impossible for Viflaren. Not enough time, and he goes down to nothing. I think if the communication had been 100% for NIP, and they had coordinated that between Forest and, and Exist, and Exist yeah. there was a chance. There was a chance. If Exist popped out and killed Shroud as he was planting the bomb, then basically... Nip, they, they didn't have to run in and force into the site. They would have had that man advantage. They still would have had Forrest alive. They would have had, uh, who was it, Freiburg with the M4. So, I mean, you never know what it is. Is it that they didn't hear the bomb was planted? Is it, is it that Exist wanted to wait a little bit longer for some other reason? We never know in, the, in that situation. But had he done that, I mean, we would have seen the, the scoreline looking a little bit different at the moment. And NIP actually do buy it up in this round already. Very few grenades and or no AWP either on anybody. So I think they're trying to get themselves two buy rounds instead of one. So mm. you're buying a little bit earlier, but hoping that before it gets to 15-15, they can actually buy one more time here. Piflaren is going to get taken down. He wanted to throw that grenade, but waited a little bit too long. Exist here is going to get overwhelmed. Just too many people firing at him. And I'd like to see NIP not trying to retake this right now. I'd rather have them saving. Looks like they might save. Get right just worried about Hiko uh, behind him lurking. And I mean, if NIP, when they lose this, they're still going to have enough money to buy next round, most likely. So we're going to see another gun round coming out. It's going to be 13 to 15, the score line, which means that NIP basically have two rounds in a row to kind of close this match out. Otherwise, it goes to overtime, and Cloud9 has that way to uh, get back in the game and uh, win the series. That has happened before. It has, against And Titan. on this map. Yep. So yes, there is two days ago. Yeah, there's some precedence, I believe, is the, the correct word here to see if they can actually do this. Semphis is gonna be going down, get right, looking to survive, but won't. Shroud will take him down. So they lose the one for Mars, and it's actually pretty annoying because I think NIP only had enough money on two of their members. So mm. saving three rifles would have meant the last two could have bought and they could have evened it out. Now I'm I'm thinking maybe one of them is just gonna have a C set or something. We'll see here in just a second. You are correct. Actually, they're going to do an eco for the last. They have the two weapons, and then that's it. Okay, so they're going to be banking on stopping them. They're Maybe gonna not go in this round. 16-14. 16-14, playing it as close as they can. Forrest has the M4, and unless Freiburg he's lost in, the other. Yeah, Freiburg lost the other, unless they're in the right positions. Forrest goes down as well. Hiko just making sure they don't get to save much of anything. Flashbang in here. Get right, trying to get the kill, but Semphis takes care of him. Finally, they pick it up, and actually, if they could save the orb and an M4 here, that'd be much better. Bomb has, been has an inkling, but oh. he hesitates just at the last second, and there's really no way he could have known that, but from our point of view, we knew one more second in that direction, and they would have been able to maybe save that AWP. But either way, NIP should be able to buy next round. Yes, they will. A good shot from Exist, dropping Hiko, and they really want to close in on him. Now they know where he is, and he's being sandwiched in. He goes for the kill on Shroud, turns around, but not quick enough. It's a limit to how fast you can do a 180 like that, unless you're maybe Hiko in that <laughs> pistol round. I think in that situation, they should have just, the NIP members should have just run through lower B into T spawn or, or B site and just save that off in the rifle. Uh, I mean, that off primarily, but it looks like they're going to get a full buy going on here anyway, so I don't know. Um, 
But look at the terrorist side here. Two AWPs trying to see if they can get a really easy pick down the middle. And that's so incredibly close. Nanoseconds away, oh. but Semphis goes down. Fuflaren. And that's a great read by Nip because Semphis actually went for that same kill last round. And if anybody on the team has that spawn, that front spawn towards long, you pass the op up to that player. And it doesn't matter if they're the opera or not, you go with that spawn for that kill. And if Florin just went there, shut that down. And now we're going to see an instant reaction from Cloud9 saying, you know what, we're a man down. Let's do this something else instead, which I'm not going to say out loud. Exactly. Grenade rains in, and NIP, they should know what it is already. Freiburg spots one, and that's a really great headshot. Shroud, low on health. Flash goes in. Freiburg looking for revenge. He's going to not get any kills. Oh. Throws out a Molotov, and can actually <laughs> hold. He gets the kill on nothing anyway. But the bomb side is not yet under control for Cloud9. This is 3-2 to two. NIP. They want that third map. They need that third map, but the bomb is going to go down, so it's going to be a retake, and this is not over yet. Cloud9 could really do this, especially it feels like with Hiko still alive. The absolute clutch master. Can they force this over time? That would be such a devastating result for NIP. They're so close. They're moving in and actually taking a lot of time. Grenades rain in, and now can they crunch the bomb site? Sean on one end, Hiko on the other, and it's ticking away inside here. They're going to check. Sean goes down. Hiko alone. One on three. And NIP, they get the third map! Look at the reaction from Freiburg. He knows what they just did. It's gonna be the third map. NIP, absolute resurrection here in the second half. That is the biggest sign of relief I've ever seen out of anyone in my life. Freiburg is loving that round. That was a great retake. They they took their time. They, they made sure that everything was lined up properly. They made sure that they were clearing everything. Big box was clear, close left tunnels was clear, under windows clear, everything. They did that perfectly. Great game by Nip. Yeah, methodical play at the end. Such a scary round. And Freiburg, when he peeked out there, I think he did critical damage to two or three players, and the Molotov even finished one of them off. So even though he could have almost got a triple kill, it, it's he still softened up the whole C9 lineup. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he. I mean, he got the headshot on, I believe it was Shroud. He, he sprayed down uh, one or two other people to like half health. Yeah. Before he died, he was out of ammo in his gun, just dropped the Molotov on the floor. He got the kill, but not only did he get that kill, it also slowed down the push into the site from the doors. And that, that gave his teammates time to kind of move around. I absolutely love it. Look, we're going to throw it over to the uh, analyst desk. It's Scoots, it's Richard Lewis, and it's also Fetish, who's almost as good as matchmaking as, uh, as I am. So take it away, guys. Thank you, Anderson Steele. All right, well, we got map three, but let's talk about this one. Uh, you know, crazy stuff. Uh, pistols go Nip's way, um, but a really tight first half. This is the kind of map, like we talked about, that as long as it's close either way, T or CT after that first half, it can go either way. Yeah. Uh, walk us through it. Well, um, Nip's wanted to start the T side, so that kind of suggests that they feel that the T side is their strongest side, and they only wanted like eight, seven, right? So that's not really comfortable. But, yeah, they managed to come back. I think one thing we've learned from watching C9 this entire event is that they love to force buy, and they make it work. They really make that work every time. Because whenever other teams force buy, they get punished badly by it. I know that Anders, the caster, uh, has made a lot of comments about it, because a lot of teams just force buy, then they lose the round, and then they don't think about the economical effects it's going to have later on. C9 really doesn't have been affected by it. They should have been this game, but they managed to come back anyways on their CT side. So, kudos to them. Yeah, I mean, uh, no doubt everyone's been kind of maybe a little bit uh, all up in, you know, talking about Nip and the Nip loving coming into this. Uh, you yourself said that, you know, Cloud9 were maybe a little bit lucky in some of their games, which I think is kind of true. I, I, I maybe agree with you. Well, to but comment on that, like, all I saw that HLV got crazy. <laughs> <because> <laughs> they always but, get crazy. But, yeah. but it's, it is the truth. Like, you don't win games because you're always just amazing. Sometimes you win because your opponents make mistakes. I'm perfectly comfortable that um, Epsilon think that it's not that we played the best T side on Inferno ever, they made mistakes. That's their thinking. I'm perfectly certain of that. So they have the same mindset. And sure, it's not to take anything away from Cloud9 because they still beat both us and Cloud, um, sorry, Titan. But we, both teams made horrible mistakes and we were in what do you call advantage positions when we had the outnumbered and we had the um, like the game points, so that is a bit lucky that we made those mistakes. But it's not to take anything away from Cloud9, because that round that everyone's seen with Hiko, that's freaking amazing by him. That was perfect. Yeah, and you know, the reason I wanted to bring that up, other than to give you a, a chance to explain it, was that I, I just feel, you know, Cloud9, they really had chances to win this. And I thought it was going to go to overtime, and I think if it had, I think that momentum would have carried through. 
Uh, and, you know, they probably would have gone on to have done it in two maps. I mean, I think they've been hugely impressive. Even in losing rounds, they're contributing incredible moments of skill. Hiko's one bullet probably is like the individual shot of the tournament. It's ridiculous. I've seen it in real time. You can't even... You don't even see him, uh, you know, who he's, who he's hit. Uh, and you can see as well from the statistics, this is the guy I wanted to highlight. Shroud, at his first ever LAN event. This kid has got talent. Believe it. This is, this is a guy who gets called an onliner back home, right? The, everyone in America has been saying, oh, he's going to crumble at this event. Well, he hasn't crumbled. He's made 1v1 clutches, you can see there. Uh, the clutch that really stand, stands out for me was uh, he made a 1v2. I think that's the one that's highlighted there, where it was against Forrest and Get Right. And that was when uh, they were 13-8 down. It took it to 39, and it was the start of the momentum building. So Shroud played out of his skin. You were really impressed with Semphis' opening style. Yeah, even style. though he's bottom of the scoreboard on his uh, team, he made like crazy orb frags. Two rounds consecutively on CT side, he picked up, uh, he pushed through the smoke and killed the guy coming um, into that small corridor. Um, and the second round, he picked off Forrest by like doing that insane jump shot where you just <laughs> land and just instantly shoot. Because yeah, he was impressive and he made a lot of entries this game. Um, and if you can keep that up, it's going to be great. On the other half, like you have Fiflan on the bottom. Um, we talked about this as well. One of the rounds they lost, he made an insane shot in the guy in pit, and then he repeaks. That completely nullifies the great thing he just did. He just threw that round away for his team. So that was really bad by him. He should never have peaked again. I, he missed a few too many shots that he should have been making. So that was correct that he was in the bottom score. We can look at stats in, in that sentence, but I think Sempis played really well. Yeah, and again, we, you know, the world is very excited on stats. Real sports cares about stats. But sometimes that guy whose job it is to just hold off the rush, get his flashes out, get his nades out, maybe get one entry kill so his team can rotate, can be the superstar, but he's going to be near the bottom of the rank, right? The man sat on my left is a prime example of that. I've never heard anybody say, Henrik, uh, you deserve to be out of Dignitas. Never heard anybody say that because maybe you don't make all the kills, but you always waste enough time so your young guns are there to to make the kills for you. I think the thing you have to look at, instead of, eh, not to get any fame or anything, but you have to look at the mistakes that people make. Like, for instance, now, Fiflon was in the bottom of the scoreboard. He made a lot of mistakes, so he actually lost the round for the team. Even though he got killed the guy jumping into pit, he saw the other guy there as well. He should never have repicked. That's a massive mistake, and that cost the round. So that's really bad, and that's why he's on the bottom of the scoreboard this half. Yep. Do not peek, as we used to always scream, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Let's, let's talk about, you know, the, the elephant in the room. We've now got a major best of three that is going to be decided on cobblestone. Look, uh, this was always going to happen at some point in this tournament. I think we knew that when we introduced the maps, this was going to happen. Someone was going to go home predicated on cobble or overpass. Well, I, I really hope that Cloud9 has played this map because otherwise this is just, this is just sad. But if they have played it, and if they have actually practiced on Cobblestone, they are the favorites to win this game. Because they have had the opportunity to watch the demos of um, the NIP game against yep. Epsilon, and NIP didn't look good at all. Um, so they know how they play it, and if they know how they play it, Semfish should have an advantage in peaking uh, Fiflan, because Fiflan were very, very, uh, he was like in set positions all the time at CT. He always went to the same spots peaking with the orb. And um, Forrest was also peaking the same corners down in the middle area. I don't know what the spots are called here, but they were very, like, they were reluctant to play in the same style. So if they don't mix it up, and I doubt that they are going to do that, because what are the odds of them actually have played the map enough to, like, reinvent themselves? So if Clydeman has played this map, I'll predict them to win this. If not, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I agree with that, Henrik. I, I honestly feel now Cloud9 are going to win this map. I really do. Uh, I think that Nip didn't do anything hugely impressive when they played it. And I know you said Epsilon had a very strange style of playing. I don't, we can't even say that, I don't think, yet. Yeah, it's too early in the map's kind of uh, life cycle. But I just feel Cloud9 are going to be confident. Nobody predicted them to be playing this well. I don't even think people predicted them to get out the groups, really. Every game's a bonus, and every game's an opportunity for them to fly the flag for the States. I think they're going to take this. I think it'll be around about 16-10. But if they haven't played it, yeah. even if it, yeah. that's think, horrible. It, it, could be, it could be worse for them. Do be, we know if yeah. they've played it? I they, do not they know. Must, they yeah. must have. Yeah. They must have. Yeah. Everybody yeah. must have played it a little bit. And again, like, regardless of what happens, great showing, a uh, new team sponsor, Cloud9. Jack must be over the moon excited. You know, he grabbed these guys from Complexity when they left Complexity, 
and they added Shroud. So no matter what happens, great showing by this North American team. And, and again, that kind of puts a wrap on our segment. Also, yeah. we I believe we hit 300,000 watching through all the various ways, Go TV, all the different streams. At least 298 I saw, which is amazing. And by the way, the game is on sale right now, 50% off. So if you've tuned in and your buddy got you to watch it and you don't have the game, it is really inexpensive to buy this game and give it a try. And it's a good time to pick it up because guys like this are like approaching 40 years old. Oh, so come on be now. Retiring Leave the old man alone. I'm going to die soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that being said, we're going to go to commercial break and we'll come right back with Cobblestone, the deciding map. Thank you. Good shit. Yeah, man.